Hey guys, hope everyone's having a good day today. Um, yeah. Hello, Sfix. Hello, Ali. And how's and everybody else watching so far? Hope everybody's having a good day so far. My day's been a day. I guess. I object to your objection. Okay. I really gotta stop making that joke. But <laughs> it's funny every time I do it. Uh, my day's been alright. Got some art things I wanted to get done. Been waiting on a tax program to fucking download. But other than that, I've been decent. Oh, yes third part of this investigation. Hopefully we'll actually get this part done today. Oh. Ah, uh, you sh should be able to ask for a resend. Otherwise, you actually... Yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah. I... What was Mr. Edgeworth talking about? Throat is sore. We can put some lemon on it. Yeah, hope, hopefully that's it's not the ladder's fix. I don't, I don't, I don't want you to crack contracting the vid. <laughs> what was Mr. Hitch talking about? The memory of a crime. That I committed. A memory of murder. Yeah, dar. I gotta turn my headset down. Give me a second. To where I live. Okie doke. If you're if you're so sure, fix. I know you can kick its ass. <laughs> I'm too bad a bitch to live. <laughs> oh, I don't believe it. Not Edgeworth. No, no worries, Fix. I understand. I understand what you meant. Don't worry. Some painful memory has been troubling him recently, but he never takes someone's life. Never. Yeah. Oh. Of of course it's him. <laughs> also, my my friend gave me ha ha a half and half manicure. What's a half and half? The only, the only half and half I know is cream. So unless he like somehow spilled milk all over your hands. What is that manicure? I can never remember the difference between manicure and pedicure. Yo, how's everyone doing? What do you think of my performance today? I had him swooning the aisles, huh, Maya? Swooning? Well, I can't get... Uh, you should be able to, Allie. They're, they're contractually obligated to. As it is, as it is. Yeah. Pedicure is feet. Okay. Thank you. Oh, oh yes. I do remember feeling faint. Right on. Tell me the truth. It was like love at first sight, right? Right, Nick? Huh? Me? Oh, uh, well, my, maybe my heart skipped a beat or two. <laughs> I love everybody just scrolling around the issue with butts. Just gonna force myself to text them before I check it out. I mean, do they respond to texts? Well, uh, it's in Canada fix. Uh, we do we do kind of have it automatic. Basically, we get a, like papers that say like, oh yeah, this is this is your earnings of the year. Uh, and then we take like either go to an accountant, which I personally do not do, or go to like a uh, like a tax program, and you just beep boop beep, put in numbers, and it auto auto, auto submits everything for you. Also, hello, hello, Gumbo, how's it going? Uh, 
I don't know anything to the government, so it's impossible to mess it up. Let's see, I was supposed to be paid from the government last year, but I didn't get anything. All right. I think you can do better than that. Come on, I saved Edgeworth in there, dude. Edgy. You guys should be bowing before me. Yeah, bow before your hero. I got almost 200 bucks. Nice. We legit can just get our taxes done by our employer here. Wow, really? That's actually interesting. I didn't know that. That'd be a lot better here. Uh, maybe. A lot of companies would probably skirt the numbers. Invest in octagons. What on earth are you going about, Gumbo? Are you, t are you, trying, to are you trying to say hexagons? It's automatically discounted from your wage. Uh, ours is too, but it still needed to be like reported somehow. See, Gumbo, I thought you were making the joke about NFTs. I don't know. Alright. Actual cringe government? Yeah, I know. Alright, uh, detention center. By the way, I forget Spix. Uh, what's the program you use for your digital art? How much does it cost? Looks like Edgeworth is back in questioning. We have our own questions for him. Let's come back later. Yeah, I guess so. Don't forget, okay. Krita, it's free. Okay, thank you. I wonder, I wonder if there's like a mod for like an art program that you could just like have multiple users on it. You know what I mean? Hey pal, long time no see. Oh, Detective Gumshoe. Close one today, eh? I use MS Paint? So do I. I love MS Paint. Just drawing silly things on MS Paint is just fun. <laughs> Had my English presentation today? How'd it go? I got some work up. I snapped my tie in half. Uh, sorry about that. No problem, Belle. Thanks to you, we now know who really did it. You mean the boat chop caretaker? Look, I'll make you a promise. I'll have that scoundrel in my custody by trial time tomorrow. Come what may. It's my duty to, to you as a police officer. I'm off to catch me a criminal. Looked more like a comedy skit. Still got a perfect grade. I mean, you speak like, from, from what you text in the chat, you guys speak like, like almost perfect English, from what I understand. From what I've seen. Excuse me, from what I've seen, yeah. My my new friend complimented me on my English. Hell yeah. This part of art is that it takes time. What do you mean I can't make up? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I enjoy the process most of all. Just being able to draw silly things. The that think I'm sure is, is sure as active. Today. Oh, oh, one other thing. <laughs> Eek. No one can go into the woods today. The woods? Well, that was camping? The woods are off limits to camping and apparently the park ranger found out. He got pretty mad. No one can go in for a while. Guess Lot is in a lot of trouble. Okay, so the text. Good luck, Allie. Hope, hope it comes out that you can just easily get your T4s resent. I don't think it's painful, Rose. You gotta you got have a different, uh, like, I guess, I guess it's the outlook on things, but whatever. 
I have just used my non-existent art to make shit emotes. I mean, I, I did enjoy Final Edge, but the problem is, uh, Gumbo, I couldn't add Final Edge to, to Beats TV because I had to, uh, I need, I, need, I need a much, much smaller size, like 112 by 112. I've just been using some dodgy website to re... Yeah, I know, but I'm also too lazy. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll probably do it later. I'll probably just use Photoshop or some shit like that. Huh? Steel eyesore is missing. Eyesore? Looks like the hot dog stand is closed too. I guess Larry's too busy worrying about Mr. Edgeworth to show up for work. Well, I'm glad I conquered at least two social interactions with people over the phone today. Gonna conquer the big one tomorrow. Don't know what that's about, but I hope it goes well. I can sit. Nah, it's got, well, I'll, I'll deal with it. I just got lazy and I didn't want to. <laughs> I'll be better about it tomorrow. That old caretaker got away. Yep. I never imagined he might be the real murderer. Ahem. I know that the clearing of the throat anywhere. Today I am feeling wholesome. Okay. Aha. Uh, uh -huh. Hello. What might you be doing here? Out uh, for a walk, hmm? Ah, the days of my youth. Like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. Mr. Grossberg, this is no time for idle reminiscing. Mr. Edgeworth's trial ends tomorrow. Uh, that is true, yes. From what I saw today's trial, Edgeworth should be fine, right? Well, I'm not sure about that. Cup Warden redid my emotes. Which ones? Why did you go quiet on me being wholesome? I was I was trying to think of what I like my response, and I was like. I, I didn't want to come across as rude, so I just said nothing. The victim whistles. Oh, I see. Okay. I I hate to ask Ali, but I, I re regarding that, I I, I wish you the best of luck. Would it be better to, for like people to like actually go in and see, not 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 the the person you know but like to, to, to be able to talk to somebody face to face instead of over the phone you can be rude to me a nerd I was like okay the, the thing I was gonna say was uh that's new <laughs> um but COVID ah uh, yeah of course of course no that makes sense but I don't know why I didn't think of that oh what do you mean by that well I'm not sure if I anything, I'll come by my office at once. I may be able to offer you some assistance. I'm sure they want to plan a meeting? Of course. No, that's... Uh... Well, I, I was... Uh, when you when when you say meeting, do you mean like... A meeting between you and the officers, or... What do you think Mr. Grossberg was doing here, anyways? Who knows? Alright. Cover yourself with something when you do it. Yeah. Now I can access this stupid thing. Nobody's home. Hello, hello, squawk. Hey, it's Polly. I wonder where your owner's gone, Polly. Hello, hello, squawk. Six check general and disco. Okay. Self care before anything else, yeah. Mm. 
just broke my vibe. <laughs> what, what a sentence. Can't believe he'd let he'd run off and leave his poor parrot to fend for herself. Hello, hello, squawk. That reminds me, Nick. Polly here knows the number to the safe, right? Yeah, that's right. Polly, what's the number to the safe? 1228. Squawk! Let's open it, Nick. Come on. I'm sure there isn't any money in there. Aw. Uh, but hey. Keeps it locked, right? So there must be something of value in there. I'm not so sure. Okay, Nick, let's see what's in there. I guess there might be a clue or two. The only thing here in it is a letter. A letter? Oh, boring. There's no name or signature on this thing. It's handwritten in very precise, clear letters. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Oh. 32 pings? Wow. Nick, why would Edge Mr. Edgeworth's be name be on here? How should I know? I'm going to read the whole thing. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Also says this is your last chance. Now's the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. The rest of the uh, rest of the letter goes on to describe the murder plot in detail. How to kill Robert Habend and frame Rad Edgeworth. Kind of got oh fuck okay you know what. This is exactly what I figured out today in court. It's all here, in perfect detail. What do you think it means, Nick? I don't know. But it looks like these are instructions for that caretaker. When he killed Robert Hammond and called out Edgeworth, he was following instructions. Then who could have written that letter? And what does it mean, get revenge on Miles Edgeworth? Oh yeah, should I get a burger or fried chicken tomorrow? Mm. I know, I, you've been saying you've... Uh, for the, ah, what kind of burger? Like, I don't know, okay? But one thing's for certain. This letter is an amazing clue. Doesn't look like he uses kitchen much. You're right. I guess the whole pasta restaurant thing was a lie. Wait, you thought he was telling the truth? Everything's cold. Looks like he didn't turn his heater on. Guess he hasn't been back here since the trial. Onion rings, bacon cheddar, and barbecue from a fast food place. That actually sounds hella good. I'd say burger. Oh, what's wrong? Huh? Oh, never mind. What? Tell me. Just when I saw the TV, I remember they're showing a pink print off. Whatever. See, that's why I didn't want to tell you. Maybe I should take care of Polly, Nick. You probably should just kidnap her. The police know about her anyway. Show that do something. Oh, well, okay. Sorry, Polly. He says I can't take you. Great, now the bird's going to hate me. <laughs> I can buy chicken later if I'm hungry. Yeah. But honestly, if you get a good juicy burger with some bacon and some cheddar, honestly, the, one of the best burgers I ever had was a burger made with blue cheese, bacon, and barbecue sauce. It was a triple B burger.
It is wonderful. Like it's it's. I I think I may have at one of the burgers I had. I I double double blue cheesed it because like there's slices of blue cheese, not like fake slices, mind you, but like actual decent slices. Oh, that that was some of the best stuff I've ever had. So I just have to apply chapstick. It's like a it's like a beeswax and uh beeswax and vanilla. Oh feels so good. This one I've had was a whiskey barbecue sauce with cheddar and rustic fries. Rustic fries are always good. Damn it, now I'm hungry again. I just had dinner too. Uh, Police Department Criminal Affairs. Hmm. Looks like Detective Gumshoe hasn't gotten back yet. Gumshoe? He won't be coming back today. Oh, really? He said there was some guy he had to arrest by tomorrow. He shouted something about if I, if catching him if it's the last thing I do. Had some bread? Just bread? Gotta have a protein or some shit. <laughs> Look like a child from the Great Depression begging for a crop bed. Good sir. <laughs> He's out. Again. When does he work anyway? Now, now, don't be harsh. Because I'll have to come back later. Okay, fuck. It was fresh and ciabatta is just too good. Oh, ciabatta bread is good. And anything fresh is like, for, for bread, is like, too good. Like, there's, there's a farm uh, near my place. That has like a bakery attached to it, and the bakery makes fresh bread and stuff. And, like there's like a fresh like cheese bread. Oh, I I I just I I can't help myself with that. You ever just shove your hand into a pack of ham and start eating? I have once. Um. Did I miss something? There's some boats falling at the dock. The murder took place in a, in a boat from the stock. Apparently the police took away the... Okay, yeah, let me read that one. Boat rental shop doesn't look good. Okay. I don't like turkey breast ham. Is that a thing? Like I know there's like sliced turkey breast, but I don't. I didn't think there was like turkey breast ham. Say Nick, don't people usually put pictures of fish up on the wall to boast about them? Ah, yeah, I guess so. I mean, the pictures of fish they caught, right? Right. But don't all the fish on the wall look really puny to you? Well, you know what they say. You should have seen the one that got away. Except the one that got away from us was a caretaker. And we did see him. I don't feel like we're having two different conversations here. I don't want to kidnap you and bring you into my home to teach you about the food I eat. I would love to. And then, like, just to experience things. Like, I know I did the milk house, but, like, there's there's other things I want to, like, I want to try, you know? I know we have a lot of, like, similar foods, like burgers, for example. But, like...
How about this? If, and this is a heavy if, I ever go to a convention and we do meet up, I'll make you poutine. And then you make me whatever whatever you can think of. <laughs> this is going to be a lot of cussing. <laughs> Every third word is fuck. <laughs> the fishing pole looks expensive. Maybe we should bring it to Detector Gumshoe. Don't you think the caretaker would mind? Well, we can just leave them the metal detector in exchange. Uh, maybe we'd better not. Seriously? Nothing left in the safe. I wonder why the caretaker didn't take the letter with him. He left in a hurry, right? I don't think he, okay. I hope it's a taste of professional chefs. 90% of the time I prefer the shit cheap frozen food or the fuck Gordon Ramsay is serving me. I'd, I'd agree. Like, there, there's there's quite a bit, like... some Sometimes people are substance over uh, flavor. Quantity over quali quality. I totally understand. Just pour some syrup on that bread. There you go. You have pancakes. <laughs> this lecture does like to go. Whatever. Everything that happened here turned out to be a lie. Cordy was lying. The charges against Mr. Edgeworth were all lies. Guess you're right. I mean, I'm glad the charges were all lies, but still. I guess Larry has today off. He's pretty happy about saving Mr. Edgeworth. True, we owe him big. Trash can with no trash. Oh, at least the place is well maintained. No one's going to sit here on a cold day like today. Oh, I'm still reading Samurai Dog. Well, it's fixed. You can make like a, a caramelish syrup. You just need white sugar, brown sugar, and a little bit of water. Seem troubled, Nick. No, no, who me? Where the fuck am I supposed to go? <laughs> you can turn my brain into syrup. No gumbo. We don't want to track gumbo disease. Today's trial. Larry, you really helped out in the trial today. You did. If you weren't there, Larry, I'm sure Mr. Edgeworth would have been found guilty. <laughs> but seriously, Nick. That workshop care caretaker guy is pretty suspicious. But Edgy ain't off the hook yet. Way to spoil the mood, Larry. Hey, I'm just a guy sitting in the audience, you know? Gumbozo syndrome. Sitting edgy seems pretty edgy. I mean, you can really tell he's you can really know he's telling the truth that night, or can you know? Nick, I don't know, but what I do know is I'm gonna believe in you two until the end. Us two, Edward, and who else? You mean me, right? Now nah, he means me, right, Nick? Yeah, you, Larry. Oh, and we just broke my heart. But why you, Larry? Huh? I'm actually, yeah. <laughs> why me? Enough of the silent treatment. <laughs> nice. Nick. Why do you trust Mr. Edward so much? I mean, he's changed recently, true. When we first met him, he was kind of a jerk, don't you think? You didn't know him back then. Back here, he wanted to become a defense attorney. Wait. 
That was when you was that when you two were classmates? Yes. In grade school. They saved me, Miles, and Larry. They saved me and I'll never forget it. That's why I became a defense attorney, you know? What? Hey Larry, what is he talking about? Oh? Uh, um... Uh, sorry, I kinda forgot. <laughs> Fucking dumbass. Okay, Nick, out with it. I'm gonna hear the story and that's final. Okay, okay. It's kind of a long story, so hang in there. It was at the very end of third grade. I was on trial, a class trial. If I had a chance you ever want a critter crash course, just hit me up. I, I, might, I might futz around with it and see what happens, but I, I definitely will. I want to improve my art a lot and see what I can do with options. Kind of like, uh, like I want to, I want to definitely change up my art style a bit, but Photoshop just doesn't have what I want. You remember Larry? Spring, end of third grade. Getting our class got his lunch money stolen. Lunch money. Our school was really small. Every month, kids would. Uh, bring in an envelope with money for for lunch from home. Oh, I see. Anyway, this kid's envelope disappeared. With $38 still inside. Oh yeah, now that you mention it, I do remember that. I can see why you'd forget, though. You were out of school that day. Anyway, the envelope had been stolen during PE class. I was coming down with a cold, so I skipped PE that day. I was the only one not in class. So, they thought you did it? Yeah. In cleansing class, it has to be put on trial. My art style is Papega. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So, the next day, we held a classroom trial with me as a defendant. I. I didn't do it. Guilty, he did it. Get the money back, you're such a meanie. Just admit you did it. You can't hide the truth. I'm not gonna read all that. But we'll take it. I'm gonna take this time for a drink. <laughs> Defend these nuts. A Phoenix, you should know you shouldn't steal people's money. It's not right. In the end, even the teacher thought I'd done it. Go over and apologize, Phoenix. I... I didn't know what was happening. I was so sad, I couldn't, st I couldn't stop crying. Everyone was staring at me like I'd done it. I tried to apologize. I went to the boy... Where the boy whose money... Whose, whose money had been uh, stolen was sitting. That's when it happened. You shouldn't have to apologize. The only thing that belongs in a trial is evidence. Reach. Anything else has no place. You should all be ashamed. Amateurs. Miles? It wasn't you who stole my money, was it? No. Then you shouldn't apologize. Everyone's been shouting you did it, but no one has any proof. That's why, Your Honor, this boy is innocent. I do like the bow tie. But Miles, it was your money that was stolen. Yeah, yeah. He did, he's the one. We don't need proof. Make him say he's sorry. Why don't you all just shut up? This is always how it is. Everybody ganging up and picking on one person. Just think how he feels. He said he didn't do it, so he didn't do it. Sorry about that. Actually asking you to fail, yeah. 
Very well. I'll replace the money myself. This class trial is over. That's how it happened. After that, the three of us were the best of friends. Wow, I had no idea. I was gonna ask how any of these kids know what a trial is or how evidence is needed in grade school. But I remember it was this series. Yeah. I mean it's even even out there it's still uh it's 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 still basically like an evidence based thing. No matter what. Out here it's just a lot more lenient, I guess. Also part of the piss drawer meme. <laughs> oh, oh no. I accidentally send that one to your teacher and then explain that. What are we talking about? Evidence. Yeah, I had no idea either. I mean, I forgot. That's when I learned what it meant to be alone. Totally alone without a friend in the world. Okay, that. You did a good thing, Larry. Um, yeah, well, I was just lucky that I took the day off from school. If I'd been there, they would have thought I'd done it. So I took it kind of personally, see? I'm not reading any of that. Your teacher showed you a meme today. Which meme? Was it a good meme? Anyway, Edgeworth and I had talked after that class trial. That's when I heard his father was a defense attorney. I remember his eyes would shine when he talked about his father. I'm going to become a defense attorney, just like my father. Oh, thank you for the master check. Did I just hear feelings in my chat? Yes. It's in Spanish from a comedy dub. Okay. And suddenly, a few months later, he suddenly transferred to another school. The DL6 incident. Right. I'm not sure, but the transfer probably had to do with his father's death. That's so sad. It was several years later when I heard Edward's name again. There was an article about him in the newspaper. The headline was something like, Dark Suspicions of a Demon Attorney. Fabricating evidence, manipulating testimonies, covering up facts. The article said he'd do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. But why? What happened? I mean, that's not the edge I used to know at all. That's what I thought, too. I tried to get in touch with him, I don't know how many times. He never replied. I guess he didn't want to see his old friends. I could just drop it, though. I wanted to meet him. To learn why he'd become who he became. That's when I decided. Wait, you don't mean... That's why? That's why he became a, def a defense attorney? To meet Edgeworth? If I was a defense attorney, I knew he'd have to meet me whether he wanted to or not. In court. Edward believed in me, and I believe in him. He's in pain, and I was on his side. I'm the only one who knows the real Edgeworth. I'm the only one who can help him. <laughs> what a fucking nerd! <laughs> Whoa, Nick. So, is that why you helped me out for free? Uh, yes. I helped you because I believed in you. Except I don't remember seeing I do it for free. Nice. Time to cry at infographics. Good luck, Fix. Good luck. Gumbo, you stop that. Stop it.
Nick. We have to save Mr. Edgeworth this last thing we do, okay? Right? It very well may be. First there's that rental boat shop caretaker. We need to find out who or what he is. I'd settle for who. <laughs> Guessing clean at some of this evidence I no longer need. I hate that emote so much. I don't know why. Oh, easier. I look as grim as always. Okay, that's a new one. I haven't seen that one before. What the hell? Okay. Story about the class trial. Class trial? What do you mean? You don't remember? No, I don't. Your lunch money was stolen. <clears throat> In third grade? Lunch money? Oh, oh right. I, I, I seem to remember something like that. Nick, I think you're the only one who really remembers. Well, it probably only really mattered to me anyways. Mr. Edward, didn't you know? The trial was the reason Nick became a defense attorney. Ridiculous. Gee, thanks. <laughs> that said, it does sound like the kind of thing you'd do. You haven't changed a bit, have you, right? So simple. To a fault, even. Well, maybe, yeah, but I think you changed too much, Edgeworth. Perhaps. Uh, Edgeworth, why'd you become a prosecutor anyways? You used to look up to your dad. You said you wanted to be defense attorney, right? I couldn't let myself deny a reality like you. What do you mean? My father was taken from me, and you want me to defend criminals? I'm sorry, right, but I'm not that good of a person. One suspect was, ap was apprehended in your father's murder, right? Yes, the man trapped in the elevator with my father. His name was Yanni Yogi. He had to be the shooter any way you look at it. Yet he was found innocent. The defense attorney got him off the hook. That would be Robert Hammond. On that day, 15 years ago, the three of us were trapped in that elevator for five hours. When we were rescued, we all suffered oxygen deprivation. I had lost all memory of the murderer. Lost your memory? Even now, I can't recall what happened in that elevator. That was the crux of Yogi's attorney's argument in court. claimed Yanni Yogi had not been of sound mind due to the oxygen deprivation. Got bored of working? Nice. <laughs> Was released due to lack of innoc evidence. Innocence. That's when I changed my mind. I started to hate defense attorneys. I have two hours to finish it tomorrow. Are you able to pace it out for the rest of the night? What's your relationship with Von Karma? He's my teacher and a man who deserves respect. I learned everything I know of courtroom techniques from him. So he's like my sister was to you, Nick. He's a perfectionist in all things. In court, in his personal life, he's obsessed with doing everything perfectly. Perfectly, huh? 
In all the cases he has taken on, none were left unsolved. And not one suspe suspect was declared innocent. Ever. I just need to make it all fit. Okie doke. Now, I wasn't, like, doubting his fix. I was just, like, making sure you're, like, not bum-rushing at the last minute. But bet that's... I know. It's possible some of the suspect were indeed, were suspects were indeed innocent. However, it is impossible for us to accurately determine that in every case. All Von Karma does is, is, is uh, does is his job and find the suspect guilt guiltily, guilty perfectly. Thought you get a lot of work done today that didn't, so I get it. Yeah, Ali, why don't you do that now? <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. In any case, it's not well impossible to find a weakness in him. Should a weakness appear, you would do everything in that power to make it go away. Not my truth. What you're saying is true. You're headed for a guilty sentence tomorrow. He's right. No, now, now is no time to praise the enemy, Mr. Edgeworth. It's a strange situation in which I find myself, I admit. Edgeworth, see this letter? Hmm. Let's give me the safe in the shack where that boat rental caretaker lives. I see. Being in school like it's... Ha! <laughs> yes, Fix, you're probably, you're, you're probably gonna celebrate hard on that last day. Unfortunately, now... I guess you gotta figure out what you're gonna do with your out of life. <laughs> I, I, uh... I remember sitting at the like in my in my chair in high school and trying to think of that sort of thing. I <laughs> hey Sawyer, how's it going? Oh, uh. That, that's weird. My alert didn't go off. Did you just gift the sub soldier, or did you resub? Could it be better? Been a rough week. Well, if you need to chill here, soldier, feel free to. There's no way to do anything. Oh, also one thing I forgot to say before the beginning of stream. At, at the beginning of stream, um, today was supposed to be Wind Waker with Dunkachi. Uh, but his computer's acting up, so we decided to postpone it until he gets his computer fixed. And hopefully even then, hopefully the the it, it didn't fuck up his save file. It doesn't sound like it it would. I didn't it doesn't sound like a storage issue. But just in case, I we let's just cross your fingers, nothing gets corrupted. You know? Revenge on me? Who's that old guy anyway? I don't know. Particularly my physics teacher. <laughs> Can it be an innocent defendant? You got declared guilty or something? Nice, right? But I don't remember that old man. Not at all. So he was following this letter then. He does solve you. That's actually a good way to look at that. <laughs> Which means there was someone else behind me. Now it's not time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. Two, me two men meaning myself and Robert Hammond? It also says this is your last chance. Last chance. Wait, maybe... Maybe he's talking about the statute of limitations on the DL6 incident. Wait. Wait, that old man. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, caviar is egg. Uh,
What is that called? I don't know. What is it? Do you know who he is? Yogi. Could he be Yogi? Yogi? The suspect in the DL6 incidents. The one who was found innocent. Can it remind me of the guy sneezing and blessing himself in that game? No, it's... My, my mom My mom said bless you as well. Stay left, Nick. Yeah, I know. Well, no time to waste. Let's get going. All right. Don't know what. Uh, uh Fuck. Curiosity will forever remain in my history. Rightfully so. It's good to be curious. <laughs> Shiraco? Is that what it's called? By the way, Gumbo, as it's fixes messages reminding me of this. How are the little kitties? I feel like I'm doing something wrong. Please, Tony Fishna. <laughs> uh, that's what we call a fish sauce. They're sleeping in, probably. Have they, have they been up and moving around at all? <laughs> Sully, what else do you expect from me? Also, Sphinx, please don't ever say that again. That's that's nasty. <laughs> Nick, no. That's a photo of his father. Don't show him that. You're right. That probably is a good good idea. A good time to dredge up those memories. What is it? Uh, no. Huh? It was a case that changed my life. And tomorrow on December 28th, its Statue of Limitations runs out. Tomorrow, could that be a coincidence? But even if the case is finally closed on paper, it will never be erased from my memory. Never. Plutonium 9. That is a radical and awesome name of hot sauce. They walk around on the shelf but they can't really get out. Are they, I'm guessing they're on the bottom shelf. Keep one of the bastards, and I think I've got two. But I'll take one. Nice. I'm gonna need more pictures of those fuzzy jelly beans. Uh, talk again. Oh, there's another option. 
Yanni Yogi was a court bailiff at the time. We just happened to be at that elevator together 15 years ago. Did you, Solier, did you actively, like, search up on Google if you could? The quake was incredibly strong. Before I knew it, everything was dark. We were there for so long, it felt like forever. The air thinned and the darkness closed in on us that was in that little box. We became unsettled. Oh, well, I can't breathe. Not because I go cod fishing? Ah, yeah, okay. Man, I can't wait for the summertime. My, my, my dad has now made it like a, a yearly ritual to go, like fishing and I, I last year I caught some really nice fish and I ate those fish they were good fish I think one of them was a catfish it was a relatively small catfish but still good eating uh, and then one of them was a smallmouth bass I think Oh yeah, it's 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 office for you. It's 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 hot month here, <laughs> or I guess it's it's it's, good. it's gonna become hot month. Quiet, I said quiet. You're not making this any easier. I want to get out. Help! Get us out. Don't shout. You'll just use up more oxygen. That's all I remember. When I came to, I was in a hospital bed, staring at the ceiling. In court, Yana Yogi's ment mental condition was called into question. He claimed the oxygen deprivation and stress has caused temporary insanity. In the end, the, the claim passed from the past the court, and Yogi was found innocent. I will just become a millionaire so I can just go to the between northern and southern hemisphere every five months and never summer. Never experience summer. Now see, I would do the complete opposite and always experience summer. Like, I, I, I would want to be warm 24-7. But isn't that strange? This letter tells him to get revenge on Edgeworth. Why would he want to take revenge on you? Excuse me. Right. Yeah? Something that's been troubling me these last few days. I didn't know whether I should tell you. You mean the nightmare? Why am I? Why am I? Why? Why am I? Why am I bad for liking the summertime? It's easier to warm up than cool down. No, I, I, I get that, but I'd rather. I'd, I'd rather be able to just, like, chill and, like, heat, you know? Memory of a crime that I committed. Crime you committed. Memory of a murder. I think, I think the time is time to tell all. The last 15 years, I've had the same dream almost every night. I wake up in a fearful sweat every time. What kind of dream? It's a dream about my father's killing in the dark. AC was more common in the UK, I might find some unbearable. Is it not that common there? Now, see, I. I, I, I like it if it's a refreshing cool. Not like frozen hellscape that is Canada at times, you know? I've, I've been in some pretty harsh winters. Like, I've, 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 I've witnessed all sorts of winters, but our houses are all fucking cold as shit. What do you do? You just set fire to your house and call it a, call it a day?
No, I can't breathe. Quiet, I said quiet. You're not making this any easier. I wonder if I would have this. I can't breathe. You, you're using my air. What? I prefer winter because it gives me an excuse to stay inside all day and there are no annoying insects. Uh, yeah, no, the bugs are always an issue, but... Citronella, though. Citronella smells amazing. Stop breathing my air. I'll stop you. What? What are you... Stop breathing my air. Oh, father. Stick bug is the... I don't think... Oh, I don't think I've ever seen, like, an actual stick bug. Or a stink bug, I think. No, I have. From what I remember, British houses are built to keep in that heat really well. So we don't have to die in winter, and we usually don't uh, need to wait to cool down and then just summer decides to fuck us. I guess it makes sense. Children in public? Yeah, I, I guess. <coughs> oh, sorry. He's attacking father. Then I see the pistol lying by my feet. I don't know if it was evidence from that day in court or the bailiffs. In the days I pick up that pistol. Get away from my father. Bang. And with that scream, I wake. It's a bone-chilling scream. A scream that has rung in my ears for the past 15 years. But... It's just a dream, right? Right? That thought is the only thing that has kept me sane for the last 15 years. But what if I'm wrong? What if it's real? They say that sometimes people shut out memories in self-defense. I will move to... There's some really beautiful places in Norway, at the very least. Norway, Iceland, any anywhere in Scandinavia, basically. Maybe it was I who killed my father. What? If you think about it this way, that way, this letter makes sense. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Think about it. Yogi was really innocent. That's why he wanted revenge against me. Wait, Edgeworth, you, you mean... It was me. I was the true criminal of Deal 6. I shot my father. Excuse me. That is true, the subconscious will block... Yeah. Have you seen Norwegian Forest Cats? I have! I'm not the biggest fan. And Edgeworth is a criminal. This is bad. What are we going to do, Nick? What can we do? I don't know. I don't think there's anything we can do. Like it or not. If there's someone else who knows a lot about the DL6 incident, maybe. There is. There's someone else who knows about the L6. Now can we finally go to the... Thank you. They're massive and fucking... Fu yeah, there's... I, I'm not a big fan of two... Ca uh, I, I like cats in general, but I feel bad for cats that have, like, flat faces and breathing defects, and... I really haven't interacted with any, but cats, I feel like cats that have, like, really long hair would be a really, really much of a nuisance, you know? Both to take care of and to clean up after. M Mr. Grossberg. Hello there, what's, what's wrong? You look troubled. No kidding, can't believe you're not. My, my, my. 
Just calm down and tell me what happened. Hmm? It's Mr. Edgeworth. He, he, he. Yeah, ex exactly, Sawyer. I, I don't know. I, I feel bad for animals that have, like... Why, why, why... Why do, like... The unpugifier. What the hell is that, Spix? <laughs> the kid is cute there, pretty. I mean... <laughs> yeah, but I, 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 I agree. It's not as much cute as it is concerning, Allie, but it's it's understandable because it's you you weren't bred to be like that, you know. We should breed humans. Uh, that's, that's gumbo. That's uh, as as much of an idea that it is. That is also quite grotesque. So Edward dreamt he shot his own father. It's only a dream. Only a dream. I wonder. Ah, uh, what? If that's the case. Then why do you two look so troubled? Well, also consider this. Yogi quite certainly holds a deep grudge against Miles Edgeworth. So deep you'd want to frame him for murder. This leads me to surmise that Mr. Edgeworth's dream was not a dream. It was real. As you imagined. <coughs> Wait, really? Also drew through the pistol to save his father, the pistol fired, and the deed was done. N no! I don't believe it. Yogi was suspected of murder, and his career as a bailiff was irrevo irrevocably wrecked. Thus, he sought revenge on Miles Edgeworth. C counter cesium poisoning? Really? Why, why is, what's in, uh, Prussian blue? <laughs> Thus he sought revenge on Miles Edgeworth. This was his last chance, of course, with the statute of limitations so close. What do you know about Edgeworth's father? Radiation emits from everything, which is worse, yeah. He was a defense attorney without peer. It sounds trite, but it's true. He may have had one peer now that I think about it. Your mentor, Mia Fey. My sister. Gregory Edgeworth was, a, was very disapproving of Mr. Von Karma's techniques. That's no surprise. Mr. Von Karma is an extreme man. Forged testimonies are an, and evidence are nothing to him. The result? He has a perfect win record in court. To beat him, Gregory Edgeworth tries to call attention to his methods. And? He lost. And died in despair, as it were. I see. Almost all radiation is counterable, if I'm not mistaken. The only one I think is not... I can't remember what it was called.
interesting. Cool facts fix. Uh, I actually quite like that. <laughs> Don't care, my balls were nuked by 5G. <laughs> That's. <laughs> Oh, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, I wouldn't be surprised if 6G was like that. Technically, it's not harmful, but you always have to have it on <laughs> by your balls. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's so that's so sad. When Gregory Edgeworth was killed, the police me police called on a spirit medium. How is your mother, Misty Faye? I'm Gregory Edgeworth. I've been killed. The one who shot me was the bailiff, Yanni Yugi. Yugi? Yeah, Yogi was found innocent. That's when my mother left us. Who needs protection when you have a cell phone that's always running Discord? <laughs> I too wish for free wife. <laughs> no, but I understand. Everyone called her a fraud. That's right. Everyone thought she she was, you see? Yet, now that I think about it, Seems the one who lied was Gregory Edgeworth's ghost. Gregory Edgeworth uh, must have known who shot him. I don't believe it. So you're saying he falsified his testimony. Remember who told me, but someone told me that if I slept with my phone under my pillow, that I might wake up with a microwave brain. Like, sure, pal, that's how it works. I don't... Yeah. Yeah. Edward Taz light up to protect his son? It's the only possibility, mind you. But a possibility nonetheless. Mean or like Booba? I mean, I'm re reasonably so. Oh, so this is a letter. It does seem that Yogi was following this letter when he killed Hammond. But why kill Robert Hammond? Hammond was a skilled defense attorney, but he defended clients not for their sake, but for his own. Ah, his own sake? He never trusted his clients, that one. The only thing he trusted was his own ability. But he got his client found innocent, so why should that matter? Actually, my dear, it's quite different. He won that innocent verdict for no one but himself. He always a free man, but socially he was ruined. Huh? You'll understand soon enough. Wait. What is it? This letter. I've seen this handwriting somewhere before, a long time ago. Whose handwriting was this? Do you have any idea who wrote this? <laughs> turn, turn that into a t-shirt gumbo like actually just to take a black or black or white shirt and then just do like the opposite color on the on, on the front just my balls were nuked by 5g <laughs> oh thank you for the hydrate Sawyer Um, do you have any idea about this? Can't be Miles, because it, it'd be framing. Can't be Yoni, because that, that was the target. So it has to be Car Karma? Delicious Aqua. <coughs> Someone slapped in the quotes channel. Hmm. Could it be Manfred von Karma? Well, Karma, why would he have something to do with this? 
Um, well, I'm not sure. Von Karma, Von Karma. Wait, you're right, my boy. This is Von Karma's handwriting, I'm sure of it. I used to see it all the time on court reports. What? But that, that means... The one who told Mis Mr. Yogi to kill was... Correct. Manfred Von Karma. Final... I'm... You know what? Sure. It, it'll, it'll take quite a bit and remind me of the future, but yeah, I'll, I'll work on it. What does this mean then? Why would Von Karma want to frame Edgeworth? Gregory Edgeworth. He was a gifted man. His death was truly a loss. What would become of what have become of the von, of von Karma were he alive? Was truly Von Karma who their slaughter, then we would then he would know the truth. He would know that Miles Edgeworth had accidentally killed his own father. He'll say as much tomorrow in court, I, I should think. He'll press the point until the court finds Miles Edgeworth guilty. Oh no! But how could Von Karma know that about Mr. Edgeworth's past like that? Even Mr. Edgeworth thought that it was just a nightmare. That I do not know. Yet I do know that Von Karma is both persistent and a perfectionist. He may be seeking to satisfy a grudge against Gregor Edgeworth by hurting his son. What do you mean? It was 15 years ago. Von Karma met Gregor in court. And Von Karma did win. But he didn't make it through the trial and scarred. What did I miss? Uh, I don't think anything. We discovered that Von Karma is the... Uh, is probably the person who wrote the letter. What happened the trial between Edward's dad and Von Karma? Von Karma got the guilty verdict uh, he wanted. He won the trial. But Gregory Edgeworth accused Von Karma of faulty evidence. And though he lost the trial, Mr. Edgeworth's accusation stood. Faulty evidence. It was the only penalty Von Karma had ever received in his career as a prosecutor. Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow into his perfect trial record. Hold on, I got a second. Oh, fuck. He's, he's probably coming for me. It was died, Von Karma killed some people. Gumshoe ate, ate someone. <laughs> wow. Must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. A vacation? He has an unusual event for a man. That was the first and the last vacation he'd taken in his many uh, many years of prosecuting. Really? He doesn't take vacations. Like, go to the sea uh, or to the mountains. Don't tell me he's never been to Europe. My, I don't even think you have. Not the ass. You have strange ideas about vacations, Maya. 
In any case. That was the only time you took a vacation from work. I believe the penalty upset him quite a lot. Odd if he wanted to keep a perfect record so badly. Why would he take such a long vacation? What do we do, Nick? Well, Karma's going to bring up DL6. You can bet on it. What if Mr. Edgeworth pleads guilty to DL6? Um, yes, Mr. Wright. I hate to say this, but even accidental murder is murder, you know? I know that. I just believe in Edgeworth's innocence. I can't believe he'd kill someone. But, Nick, Mr. Edgeworth admits it himself. His father must have lied to protect him from beyond the grave. <laughs> Older than Brexit <laughs> silence. Ooh. <laughs> I got someone super hooked on a game. Which game? I don't care. I know he's not guilty. Mr. Wright, if you say so, I suppose I could go check again. The police files might have something of interest. Mr. Grossberg, thank you. Hades? I've heard really good things about that game. I don't have I've haven't seen any gameplay or I've never seen any or I've never played it myself. I haven't slept a uh, step to my knowledge. Ha. <laughs> I can't promise anything. In fact, I think the chances of finding something are slim. I understand. Please, materials, hmm? And they installed it last night? Nice. Are you, are you talking about in-game Solier, or are you saying just in general in lore? There's <laughs> hardly anyone here. Everyone else must m must be out looking for the old guy, Yogi. Yeah, in game in general. Oh, okay, I see. Okay, that's you. I think Gumshoe will be coming back today. He's staying out late looking for someone. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe is pounding the pavement for real. Um, we were wondering if we could check out the records room again. Well, now I can't just have anyone wandering around in there. But I guess Mr. Von Karma is in there now anyway. Uh-oh. You can go in as long as he's, th he's there. Von Karma. Yes, he just arrived, actually. Von Karma in the records room. Nick, let's hurry. I, I gotta see some of these images. Dusty as always. You are only here just yesterday. I'm sure that you haven't had the time to clean. What's wrong, Nick? Nothing. I was noticing that he isn't here. Von Karma. Huh? One of the drawers here is open. Someone must have been looking in it recently. The label says unsolved cases evidence. Hmm. Unsolved cases. What the f what the fuck are you guys going on about in chat? Unsolved cases. Nick. The file for DL6, it's completely empty. What? What are you doing in here? Boy, he's ugly from the front. Oh. Eek! Von Karma. You. 
How do you know my name? No, so, so I'm talking. I'm talking about this character. He's 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 ugly. Have we met? What are you saying? We see each other every, every, every day, don't we? Or Miles Edgeworth's defense team. Defense team. Ahem. I beg your pardon. You see, I rarely remember defense attorneys. They're like bugs to me. Needless things to be crushed. You can see how this guy's was Edgeworth's mentor. Um, Mr. Edgeworth is your student, right? A romanticist who's, who still can't shed that veneer of amateurism. Just like his father, always second right. Mr. Von Karma, you had an extra grand with Mr. Gregory Edgeworth, didn't you? Me? A grudge against a mere uh, defense attorney? Why? Because he dealt the blow to your otherwise perfect trial record? Wait, that's Mr. Caviar's mentor? Yep. Because you, you didn't add a space. So you did, but what I don't get is, why did you take his son under your wing afterwards? The son of your most bitter rival. That, my dear attorney, is none of your business. Alright, fuck you. Tomorrow will be the last day of this trial. It's been a while since I've had a defense attorney last this long. Still, you will lose in the end. Miles Edgeworth will admit his own guilt. His guilt of 15 years ago, you mean? You're quite the researcher. If you've done your homework so well, then certainly you must understand. You know that my, what Miles Edgeworth will tell the court tomorrow. We were right. So Von Karma is going to bring up Gale Six in court tomorrow. He does look very weird from the front. Fool, you think I, a prosecutor, would give you a defense attorney information? Uh, I'm afraid to give this to him because I feel like he's going to destroy it. Why is my karma... He does remind me of the English teacher that everyone hates. Oh, I, ha I had that in high school. Man, I hated her so much. Oh... Uh, No one liked her because she, at one point, she had said that suicide was a selfish act. And that, like, uh. Yo, fuck it. Mr. Von Karma, have a look at this. This was you, wasn't it? You instructed Yanni Yogi to commit murder. Yanni Yogi. How many years this has been since I heard him call heard him called by that name? He's a fool. I told him to burn after he read it. So you admit it. You wrote Mr. Yogi this letter. Yes, my dear defense attorney. Thank you for taking the trouble to bring it to me. You saved me from a lot of needless hassle. Fuck. What? What is that thing? Oh, what the hell? A stun gun. For self-defense, usually. Only one was one in my class that I... Why, why did he, why did your teacher snap? Indeed. 
600,000 volts, of course, to your body like a dog touching an electric fence. 600,000? Oh, don't worry. People don't die from it, usually. Now give me the letter. No. Whoa, what are you? Nick, run. Oh. Maya! Out of my way. Holy shit. I mean, only the girls really. Because my class behaved like ass and he fucking snapped. Like, did he just start yelling or? Y'all know my finger tail. I don't know that one. Did you just die? Yep. I'm now in heaven. <laughs> Ugh, you got us. The letter's gone, of course. And he took the DL6 evidence. All of it. Back to having no clues. Wait. Maya jumped first. Maya, is she okay? Maya! Maya, open your eyes. Innocent sounds. Cut my finger really deep. The like, really? Isn't that like extremely punishable by some sort of law? He snapped a whiteboard in half. I highly doubt that. It's it's. I know they're brittle, but it's not. It's like what would he just have? Like it's. You, they're usually just bolted to the walls. They c couldn't have been removed. Did y'all have a teacher throw a chair at a kid? Not that I know of. Am I open your eyes? I don't know how to tell you this, but I have a lot of teachers' horror stories, including illegal shit. Why does nobody report this shit? Maya. The letter, did he take it? Huh? Oh, yeah. Are you okay? I couldn't stop him. I jumped as fast as I could, but one shot from that thing knocked me out cold. I'm useless. No good as a lawyer or a medium. I can't even call my sister. Not even now when we need her the most. I wish I hadn't woken up at all. Oh, that's really depressing. I hope that story is real because I was too bored for solid class, but apparently some primary school teacher threw a chair at a kid. If true, kind of impressive. Chunk is for snorting. <laughs> I don't think I had a teacher that actually threw things around. There has to be some way I can help her. Better do something about her self-confidence first. Maya, she's holding something. What is that, a bullet? DL6 incident, evidence number 7, taken from the heart of Gregory Edgeworth. I remember. Von Karma was holding this when Maya jumped him. I'll prove it to you, Maya. You're most definitely not useless. Prove it to you in court tomorrow. Final day trial. Ho. Oh.
Last day. <sighs> Sorry. OMG Finals. <laughs> this is an Inspire 64 day trial. <laughs> this is it. Judgment Day. Would the court believe if you tried to say Karma shot you with a stun gun without a witness? Uh... No. Jay things are gonna get settled at last. A lot of things. Ah! What's the big idea? Sorry, Nick. I only touched your shoulder. I guess I guess the shock uh, hasn't worn off from my run-in with the stun gun yesterday. Anyhow, today's the last day of the trial. Good luck, Nick. Yeah, thanks, Maya. Edgeworth is looking glum as always. A one cover doesn't push up too hard. Whoa! What are you doing? Sorry, I'm sorry. I said I'd cheer you up with a pat on the back. Maya, maybe you should go outside and discharge? Right, good idea. That's not something you should say. Would this witness come and would have shot them too? Yeah, probably. Try not to electrocute anyone in your way out. <laughs> Fun karma went on a fucking rampage and tastes like white people. That would be hilarious to read about. <laughs> what? What's gotten into that girl? Detective Gumshoe. Morning, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, good morning. How'd it go, Detective? Have no fear, as promised, I've captured our runaway caretaker. I just brought him in. Took all night, pal. Thanks, Detective Gumshoe. You must be tired. Actually, after that shock I got on the way in, I feel pretty good. Yogi says he's forgotten his own name. But it has to be a lie. Why would you want re revenge on Edgeworth if he couldn't remember his past? He does remember, and I'm going to prove it. Your mom gave you a kick at hell yeah. Dark Chalk was still pretty good. Bitter, but decent. Who here has been tased before? Uh... I received a nasty electric shock once. I don't think it counts as being tased. Court is now in session for the trial of Miles Edgeworth. Defense is ready, Your Honor. And Mr. Grumpy Pants. Procrustation is ready. Ah, right, very well. Take my directly to the Kit Kat because it's my chalk and I have no intention to share it. Okay. I've been tased before, but I've licked the end of a charger and got shocked, kinda. Why? Why would you do that? Uh, right, by well. You reached the final day of, the, uh, of our proceedings in this trial. I ask that the prosecution submit decisive evidence. Understood. Come on, don't be odd into silence about every little thing he says. Very Mr. Well, Mr. Moncoma, your opening statement. You're right. Thanks for the Detective Gumshoe's efforts, the boat rental shop caretaker has been arrested. In yesterday's trial, the defense asserted that the caretaker was the murderer. However, the caretaker has yet to confirm this. I'd like to ask the defense to cross-examine as much as necessary. Why do I feel... Uh, I'm not feeling good about this. When I say tased, I mean 10k volts for less than half a second. You had to put ground? I have not. Why have you been tased, Sawyer? Very well. Please bring the witness into the courtroom. Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I believe you all remember our witness. He lives in the boat rental shop from on the lake from where he witnessed the incident. In addition, he has currently lost memory of his name and identity. I used to own one and I wasn't going to taste someone if I didn't know how it felt. I lived in the hood a while back. Ooh. 
It was a taser or nine millimeter. Well, I'm, I'm glad you chose the less lethal, less lethal option. Witness, why did you run away yesterday? The witness is what not running away as he will now testify. I I see. Very well, please begin your testimony. Like sixty percent sure someone clasped a nipple with deodorant or something. Yeah. Why? Is that? Am I missing something? I'm really sorry about just sleeping yesterday like I did, but I wasn't running away or nothing. I went to buy some food for Polly. See, we got nothing to do with this incident anyhow. I mean, I need one of those moda things, right? And I don't got one. Fuck. So my testimony yesterday stands as is. No, oh, the deodorant scar. Oh, okay, I see. Humans are strange. Let's begin the cross examination, shall we? Yes, no is name. Yanyogi. You're Yanyogi, and I'm going to prove it. Alright. I'd call you did what you did running away and not just leaving. You heard you heard Larry's testimony and realized you were in danger. Now Mr. Wright, there's no need to rush to conclusions. As I said, the witness was not running away. Listen to the testimony. They're both the Von Karma and Yanni Oki. Actually, Gumpo, I believe there's like a 1 in 40 chance that, that like men would be capable of doing such a thing. I wasn't really aware enough. Why did you leave? He's just about to say why. So hard for you to listen to the quiet when someone's talking about her. Food? Well, Polly's a bit of a gourmand, you see. She only sees high quality bird pellets from France. They only have them in the big pet shop downtown. But you weren't arrested until this morning. Why don't you go back to the caretaker shack? Ah, well. I kind of got lost, you see. But this is a trouble remembering me sometimes. Sawyer, so aesthetics. For the ladies. <laughs> or, or some guys, too. Sawyer, also after my experience with having a brother, yeah, that's the only reason. <laughs> when the police apprehended him, he was on his way back to the shack. Come, I see, so he was lost. Please, Your Honor, have come to your senses. So I figured it got nothing to do with this incident anyhow. You lost much of your memory, is that correct? Uh, uh, yeah, seems like it. Then how could you know that you didn't have anything to do with this incident? Uh, or... Maybe you're lying about not having your memory. You know exactly who you are. Witness has testified clearly that he has no memory of who he is. If you claim if you claim he's lying, then show the court proof. Alright. <sighs> How am I supposed to prove what's going on in that old codger's head? That's impossible. Hmm. I'm glad you come to your senses, Mr. Wright. Very witness. Very well witness. Please continue. 
I need one of those moto things, right? And I don't got that one. I already said you had no moto, but say you do. It's a grudge against Eth Edgeworth and the victim, Robert Hammond. That's why you took revenge on them, right? Please don't make me repeat myself. This is the, this witness I have no memory of anything beyond several years ago. You can't hold a grudge, it's impossible. It's proof he's lying about his memory. Otherwise, it's going to be the same thing over and over until the trial ends. Sorry, I was just going through chat there for a second. <coughs> Why do I have the coughs? Did I eat something wrong today? Oh, it might be the butter chicken. It was a little bit spicy today. Otherwise, it's going to be the same thing. Oh, okay. Might I say something, Mr. Wright? Yes, yes, Your Honor? You've been saying the same thing now over and over. You've been calling the witness's memory of the past or lack thereof into question. But does that really have anything to do with the current case? Of course, Your Honor. The witnesses said that he has nothing to do with this case and no motive. Both of these statements are lies. Noodle Todd? Nice. Mr. Wright, there's a serious problem with your claim. Or are you saying... i saying you know who this witness is. Of course, Your Honor. Ho ho! Now this is interesting. I like to know myself. So who is he? Don't play dumb boy, Carmo. Mr. Wright, please tell us this witness's name. His name is Yanni Yogi, a former court bailiff. Yogi? That name seems familiar. Oh! Yanni Yogi, from the DLC 6 incident. Figures the judge would have heard of it. It was such a famous case. Gumbo, uh, gum bone soup. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 uh, the reason the dark chocolate Kit Kat is half decent is because there's a lot of sugar like in the wafers to like counteract the bitterness. I think it'd be cool if I had rubber bones. Yeah. <laughs> Who cares if you can't stand? Just inflate yourself. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. I feel like the judge was the one who passed in the in over the other. Maybe? He is old. But what does this mean? Your Honor, if this man is Mr. Yogi, then he has a clear motive. Tisk tisk tisk. Jeopardy conclusions, conclusions again, Mr. Wright. This man, this witness, is Yanni Yogi? Fascinating. However... How do you propose to prove this to the court? This is a court of law, as you may recall. You need proof. Are you, are you... One thing I've, I've never made before, but I really want to try, is homemade noodles. Like, actual, like, homemade pasta. And allow me to repeat once more, the witness has lost his memory. This is it. I have to do this now. If I can't prove he's Yogi right here right now, then I've got nowhere else to go. Nick. How are we going to prove it? How can you prove that he's Yanni Yogi? It's okay. It's actually quite simple. Your Honor, please take this man's fingerprints. Then we'll, we'll compare them to the fingerprints on file for Yanni Yogi 15 years ago. I see. That makes sense. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Huh? Oh. I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. If we ever chill, I'm making my homemade noodles. Sawyer, you are a blessing. You know what? If if there's ever if, if there's ever going to be like a, a bonfire at TwitchCon, it, we're going to have a potluck. Where we're, we're each going to bring our foods that like we're, we're like prominent, prominent with making. And then just like enjoy good foods together, you know? Even clean my room today? Hell yeah. 
I just want a video of someone touching grass and their hand just catches fire. <laughs> Why? The witness has no fingerprints. What? What? No fingerprints? Uh, you see, before I worked as a caretaker, I worked at a chemical plant. I burned my fingerprint finger fingers working with the stuff. Oh yeah. What? I'm not good at cooking. I should not be trusted to do so. I will burn myself. Surely you could do baking or something. Make some make some brownies or some fun something fun. Yogi, sneak. You burned your fingerprints off to hide your past. Well, the witness has no fingerprints. I would guess we not be able to prove his identity. No. Oh, you do, Mr. Wright. Uh. Hmm? It seems that the case has been decided now. I know, I know what happened. I know everything. I just can't prove it. But no, I can't let it end like this. I can't lose. There has to be another way. There is no one who can testify as to who this witness is. Oh! Oh no. Is this is this story going where where you think? See I, I the the reason I'm like half a decent chef is because I took a a course in high school. And then B, I took a night school course when I was in college, because it was free, and I was like, oh, you know what? Let's let's figure out ways to. It was it was a course called like something like improving foods with with uh, alcohol and spices or something like that. So I, I figured out ways to improve things with that. So I do I do have a little bit of a like an interest in that kind of thing. There's no one who can. Okay, Nick, what are we gonna do? I didn't even consider that he might have erased his fingerprints. What do I do? Well, Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to cross-examine his parrot for a little comic relief. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, very funny. You're a sore winter ball, Karma. Wait a second. Cross-examine his parrot. Yeah, we're doing this. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm lucky I could just put shit in the bread. <laughs> My dad, my dad did cooking classes when he had the mandatory visits. Mandatory visits. What is it, Nick? No, you're not going to. Your Honor. The defense would like to take Mr. Von Karma up on his proposal. Take Mr. Von Karma up on my proposal. Exactly, Your Honor. I would like to cross-examine the witness's pet parrot. <laughs> Uh, sweet egg bread. Ooh, that sounds good. Also, Sphix, I think you're slightly delayed. Order, order. Oh, well, what do you think, Mr. Bonkarma? Need you and even ask? This is a farce. I object. Wait a second. You were the one who suggested I cross-examine the parrot, Mr. Bonkarma. I have a right to do as you suggested. I'm re caught up. Okay, okay. <laughs> Imagine getting chilled because your parrot snitched. <laughs> well, if you're so desperate, then please be my guest. Of course, should you go through with this and nothing comes of it, then I hope you're ready for the consequences. Nick, this is crazy. Well, still want to go through with your little game? Screw it, sure, I can't think of anything else. Let the parrot take the stand. I will cross-examine her, Your Honor. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Von Kummer's rigged every person's testimony, every piece of evidence. Except the parrot. She's my last chance. At least, I think so. Bailiff, bring in the parrot. <laughs> I 
That's quite a bird. <laughs> Hello, X Ted. How's it going? <laughs> the unriggable parrot. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, <clears throat> can someone remind me at the end of stream uh, that the uh, raid message has to be bring in the parrot? That's quite a bird. Please tell us her name. Name. The witness is ignoring me. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. It must hurt to be ignored by a bird. <laughs> Very well, witness. Who's your owner? Uh, please testify for us. Hello, hello. Squawk. <laughs> hmm, certainly the most concise testimony we've had so far. Very well, you may be getting a cross examination. Right. Oh my goodness. Need the secret words? Yeah. Right. What are you gonna do, Nick? I I don't know. What do we do, Maya? Hmm. Imagine someone bring. <laughs> Who is your owner? Hello, hello, Squawk. Witness, you can't just say hello and expect us to get anywhere. I want you to testify. Maya, you talk to her. Right, uh, what do I say? As I recall, two days ago, I love the idea that someone has to write down what the spirit says. Yeah, the sonographer just like, uh, how do I do shorthand for squawk? <laughs> oh, uh, X X Ted, thank you so much for the for becoming a bonfire buddy. Appreciate that. How's it going? Squawk! Don't forget DL6. Squawk! I need to hydrate. I'm sorry. I don't know what I why I just took out my headset for that. What is that game? Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Right now I'm playing the uh, Ace Attorney Trilogy, so. This guy should really have a squirk emote. Yeah, he should. If I get Polly's to say that here, that will prove that the caretaker had something to do with the DS6. <coughs> Sorry. Polly, have you forgotten something? Hello, hello, Squawk. Uh-oh. That's not what you're supposed to say. Forgot. Something we forgot. Hello, hello, Squawk. Uh, it's not working, Nick. She won't say it. This is ridiculous. Why won't she say it? Test, test, test. Something the matter, Mr. Wright? Wait. Don't tell me Von Karma expected this. He couldn't have retrained the parrot. Could he? <coughs> Sorry. It's justice for all. The trainer not to respond when he asks if you've forgotten anything? I'm gonna... Uh, what is the safe number? Maybe I'll say the name of the number that's safe, huh? The safe? Why? Let's just try to get her to say anything, okay? Polly, what was the number of the safe in the shack? 1228, 1228. 
It's called fucking Von Karma. Of evil. My, what a reckless parrot. Well, Mr. Wright, you are claiming that this number has something to do with the caretaker. Twelve twenty-eight. Actually, it does. That's why I had her say it. Ha! Ridiculous. How can the number to a safe tell us who the caretaker is? Show us your proof. What could possibly link this number to the caretaker's true identity? The deal six case file. What is the obsession you have with that case? Mr. Wright? Why this file is something pertaining to that safe number? Case summary. It's on the case summary page. The case summary? Specifically the date on which the DL6 incident occurred. The date of the incident, December 28th? Why, that's today's date. 15 years ago. And the number on that on that safe is 1228. Ah. He used the date of the DL6 incident as a number for his safe, Your Honor. That's how that... It's That's how important that date was to him. I see. It certainly is an interesting coincidence. People often do set their... Secret number numbers to dates. Bah, this is not tangible proof. I I set my ATM's card number to zero 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 one because I'm number one. This has nothing to do with a date. Nothing. I love how he just gives away his like his card number just and then people just steal his money. Hmm, indeed. Loan is a little weak for evidence in a murder trial. We need some other cooperating evidence. Where am I going to find that? Nick, we're getting closer. One more if we can just get one more piece of evidence. Right, but what? Very well, witness, you may continue. Witness, you're here to speak. You must speak to me. Frankly, I can't believe that you're speaking to the parrot. Von Karma, please shove a cane up your ass. <laughs> Very well. Just try to get some information out of her. You just show the judge that her owner is Mr. Yogi. Alright. What's your name? We should get her to say her name. Polly Polly, what's your name? Polly Polly, squawk. Mr. Wright, I think we've established that this parrot is named Polly. Does that have anything to do with the owner's identity? This does. Ha! Fascinating. Claim that the parrot's name will prove her owner's identity. Then show us this proof. Nick, don't you think you're taking the bluffing a little too far? Listen. We're not here to answer the question of who is the caretaker. We're here to prove that he is Yanni Yogi. All I have to do is tie the name Polly to Yogi. Your Honor? Proof that the parrot's name reveals the caretaker's identity is... Suspect data. Okay. The six case file? It's quite a large file you have there. Which page is the proof on that? Show us or stop wasting our time. Hmm. Very well, Mr. Wright. Please show us the page. Where in this file is the information connected to the parrot's name? 
It's on the suspect data page. This page has all the information about Yanni Yoki. Right after he was arrested, his fiance committed suicide. See? You should really stream again so I can kill that child. Why not? Oh, because you're lazy, I guess. Okay. And Zeta does say that, yes. What's fiance's name? Polly Jenkins. Polly? Exactly, Your Honor. He wanted to remember the name of the fiance who had committed suicide. That's why he named his parrot after her. I see, I guess that is possible. Bah, a mere coincidence, that's all. My granddaughter has a dog she calls Phoenix. Well, Mr. Phoenix Wright, does that make you my granddaughter's fiance? She's only seven years old. That's enough. I think we've reached a conclusion here. This is a mere coincidence, that's all. True, that is a possibility. However, two coincidences at the same time seems more like a pattern to me. What are you saying? What? Excuse me. Summon the caretaker of the boat shop. Immediately. Get birded. <laughs> Bird up. <laughs> Witness. Tell us your name. Wait. This witness, he doesn't remember. No. It's okay. Oh, shit. No, it's bird up. <laughs> da, da, da. That should not have worked. Yeah, I know. Oh, boy. I've accomplished what I wanted to do. I'm done. Nick, he looks totally different. This is the real Yogi, I think. Finally. He's been acting people to hide his true identity. Acting for 15 years. Well, let me ask you again. Please state your name for the court. My name is Yanni Yogi. 15 years ago, I served as a bailiff in this very court. Order, order. Yanni Yogi. So was it you who killed Robert Hammond? And tried to find Miles Edgeworth for his death? Yes, it was me. I did it. They put me on the witness stand 15 years ago. Robert Hammond. He said I was mentally unsound. He told me it would, told me it would make me innocent. Get me off the hook. So I pretended to have brain damage. I was innocent, really. But he didn't believe me. We won the trial, but I lost everything. I lost my job, my fiance, my social standing. Then, this year, 15 years later, a package arrived. It was a letter and a pistol. The plan was written in out in careful detail. It was a plan to take my revenge on the people who ruined my life. I didn't care who had sent it. I thought this was my chance after 15 years, this was it. Finally, a chance to have my revenge on Robert Hammond and Miles Edgeworth. I have no regrets. Wait a moment. Revenge against Miles Edgeworth? What do you mean? I'm not at liberty to speak on that matter. Why don't you ask Mr. Edgeworth yourself? Oh! Hey, Yuri, how's it going? Oh, did I actually just click? What, what, what were you playing? Fix, fix, can we get a uh, quick SO? Assassin, ooh, this, oh, the second Assassin's Creed. Oh, that was good shit. Thank you for the Boston Jacket Hydrate. <clears throat> I know it's Ubisoft, but I actually have friends who uh, actually work at Ubisoft. Uh, so 
I can't, I can't exactly say that. That's like a bad company. They have decent all, all in all, but... Were you, in, were you enjoying that game, Mirai? Fun Karma? Where is Mr. Yogi? Under arrest, Your Honor. I saw no room for error in his confession. Then the defendant Miles Edge with his innocence, in this case at least. Hmm. Very well. Well, defendant, please take the stand. AC2 is great, I just don't like the direction of their games. I draw the line of the Syndicate? No, I, I, I understand. Um, I think I started hating, uh, disliking it any, anywhere after um, Black Flag, I think it was. There, there are a few mysteries left unsolved. Still, you're clear of suspicion for this particular case. So I'd like to pass judgment on the murder of Robert Hammond. Any objections? I don't believe it. Why isn't Von Karma saying anything? Very well. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, not guilty. Hell yeah. You have a good one? Alright. Take care, Uri. Have, have, have some good rest, get some good food, to do whatever you need to do, and uh, hope, hope you have a good one too. Wow! That is all court is adjourned. Oh no. Parrot carried? Yeah, Parrot did, get, Parrot did carry, yeah. Did someone just say objection? It wasn't Von Karma. Wait, but that means... No. Edgeworth? Oh, oh no. Your Honor, I object to your judgment. What do you mean? I'm not innocent at all. As we have heard, Yanni Yogi killed Robert Hammond in revenge. But revenge for what? Nick. Edgeworth is trying to confess. He's going to say he's guilty. He's going to tell him that he was the murderer in the DL6 incident. He's going to tell him that he killed his own dad. Uh-oh, what do I do? Raise an objection. The judgment has already been passed. I object to Edgeworth's outburst. Didn't something like this happen yesterday, too? I believe a certain witness raised an objection after a guilty verdict was passed. That would be Larry. We must hear this new statement. We must hear Miles Edgeworth. He's right. You have a duty to hear Mr. Edgeworth out. Objective, object to Karma's counter objection. Objection, 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 objection. That's why I hate court. Understandably so. For 15 years, I've had a recurring dream. A nightmare. It's only a nightmare. That's what I told myself. But now I know. It wasn't a dream. The only yogi wasn't the killer. You mean in the incident where your father died? From the distance of the shot, it wasn't suicide either. Everything was as clear as day. The murderer, the criminal in the DL6 incident, it was me. Your Honor, I confess my guilt. I'm guilty for DL6, statute of limitations of which ends today. Oh, fuck. Ah, oh, shit. Alright. Culprit is me. Order, order. This is certainly unexpected. The defendant declared innocent is confessing to a different crime. A crime for which the statute of limitations runs out today. I'm not really sure how I should deal with this. Bah. It's obvious. We hold a trial. Right here, right now. We try for this... We try this man for his crime of 15 years ago. I think... I think I would like to take a 5 minute recess. This time I will consider the appropriate course of action to take. Court is adjourned. Waste enough time, then the day will pass and he can't be charged. Yeah. I'm sorry, right? 
I've just wasted all your effort. Mr. Edward, I don't believe it, sir. I mean, you kill your dad? I didn't want to believe it myself, detective. <laughs> I do love how the judges can say, fuck this, I need a couple minutes. Exactly. I don't want to believe it myself, detective, but it's the truth. I deserve to be punished. Murder is murder no matter what the circumstances. This is crazy. Just crazy. Nick, what are you doing? Huh? Oh. I was just reading through the court record once more. I'm getting my case ready. Your case for what? Huh? Isn't it obvious? I'm going to prove that Miles Edgeworth is innocent. What are you talking about, pal? He just admitted to it. He confessed that he did it. In court. I'm sorry, Edgeworth. But I don't believe your nightmare. What? It's just a dream. It's not real. The truth is right here in the court record. In any case, tighten your belts. The real fight is just beginning. I'll prove you're innocent. Trust me. Right. I am really curious to see how this is going to go. Now then, I would like to resume our trial. Judge? Aldrith has admitted his own guilt. He has confessed his crime. Let us begin by hearing his testimony. Then, through pointless... Oh, sorry, though pointless, let the defense do the cross-examining. The statute of limitations on the DL6 incident runs out today. Though it's unconventional for me, I'd like to run this one by the book. I see. Does the defense have any objections? No, Your Honor. Von Karma, you knew this was going to happen from the, from the very beginning, didn't you? Very well. Will Miles Edgeworth take the stand? Will the witness state his name and profession? Miles Edgeworth. I'm a prosecuting attorney. Mr. Edgeworth. Fifteen years ago, you mistakenly killed your father, Gregory Edgeworth. Is this correct? It is correct. Then testify about this matter to the court. When Edgeworth was telling me about his dream yesterday, I noticed something. One detail didn't quite fit. That will be the key, but only if I get into work. Please, please. That day, I had gone to observe uh, to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. As we went to leave, an earthquake struck, trapping us in the elevator. My father, Mr. Yogi, lost her composure and began to argue. Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi, but I wanted them to stop fighting. A moment later, there was a single gunshot and then a scream. It was a terrible scream. I remember it to this day. That's all. Hmm. And until you now, you thought this memory was a dream. We were stuck in that elevator for five hours. The oxygen of the elevator ran out and I lost my memory of the events. Bah, the same claim Mr. Yogi was made Mr. Yogi has made. Very well. Mr. Wright, your cross examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. That day I had to go to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. Press! What was the trial that your father was involved in on that day? I don't remember things very clearly. Only two things. I know my father lost, and Mr. Von Karma was a prosecuting attorney. Mr. Von Karma? You were handling that case? It was 15 years ago. I don't remember the details. I was imagine what pointed out the problem in Von Karma's evidence. As we went as we went to leave, an earthquake struck trapping us in the elevator. So there were three people, including yourself, trapped in that elevator? Yes. Myself, my father, and Yanni Oki. We were fine at first. But then as time passed, no one came to help. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and began to argue. What did you do then? I was a nine-year-old boy at the time. What could I do? I was scared, trembling in the corner. 
but then some then just then something heavy fell at my feet. What was it? A pistol. I assume it was the bailiff, uh Yaniyoki's. The safety must have come off when it fell from his holster. And you picked it up? What happened next? I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. Did you know it was a pistol when you threw it? I think I knew. I knew it was dangerous. But the air was getting so thick, I panicked. So you're saying you threw the pistol at Mr. Yogi? I was in a daze. A moment later, there was a single gunshot and then a scream. The gun fired once? Yes. I think after I threw it, I lost consciousness. Since then, they've echoed in my head every day. That gunshot and that horrible scream. The scream. It's a terrible scream. I remember to it this day. To this day? Yes, I can practic practically hear it now. I doubt I'll ever forget that scream as long as I live. There it is. One part of that testimony clearly contradicts the evidence. But I don't know what it means. I better find out in quick. I think it might be this one because there's a bullet hole here and a bolt a thing there, unless it somehow pinged straight through him. Fuck. The witness's statement is clearly faulty, Runner. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I can see nothing faulty. More so, I have to penalize you, Mr. Wright. Ugh, I must be on the wrong track. Is fired twice. Are you sure you only heard one gunshot? Yes, I'm sure of that. I heard the shot and the scream. Then everything faded. I was unconscious until the rescuers came. I see. No, Your Honor. Unfortunately, you don't. Look at this file one more time. Finally contradicts the witness's testimony. You do enjoy dragging out that file, don't you? I don't accept this evidence until you can tell us what page it's on. Which page contradicts Miles Edgeworth? Victim data. Look at the victim data on this file. It says quite plainly, the murder weapon is fired twice. Hell yeah. Miles Edgeworth only heard one gunshot, yet the murder weapon was fired twice. The first shot was the accidental firing when the pistol was thrown. So who fired the remaining shot? Was there perhaps another shooter who fired that second shot? Your Honor, as I'm sure you're aware, 
This incident occurred 15 years ago. The evidence is dated. The pistol did fire twice. However, we do not know when that second shot was fired. It might have been fired the day before the incident. There is no proof that the second shot had anything to do with this incident. What? I see, I see. You do have a point, Mr. Wright. The murder weapon was fired twice as we have heard. One of those shots was fired by the defendant, a boy at the time. Do you have any proof that the other shot was fired? It had something to do with the case. I think I'll be able to show you proof. What? Impossible. Now, now, Mr. Von Karma, save your surprise for after you've seen the evidence. Very well, Mr. Wright, show us your proof. Do you have evidence that the second firing the pistol is related to this incident? I think it's this, because it's a... Uh... Look at this photo. Look at this photograph. I'm going to make that joke every time. This is a photograph of the scene of the crime, 15 years ago. I can still see that the victim's lying there is Gregory Edgeworth. It proves that the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. This photo proves it. So let me get this straight. This photo proves two shots were fired? Where? Y Your Honor, please get a clue. As should be obvious, the contradiction is here. I see. A bullet hole in the door. Your Honor. Gregory Edgeworth was killed by a shot from the pistol. Yeah, there's also a bullet hole in the elevator door. We also know that the murder weapon was fired twice. Thus, someone other than Edgeworth fired that second shot. Why does this game have uh, something in hard, like a hardcore mode? Where I only get one chance at a perfect draw. I think it'll be interesting. Order, order. Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? It's simple, Your Honor. At the time of the incident, two shots were fired. One went to Gregory Edgeworth's heart. The other hit the elevator door. Remember that the defendant lost consciousness after the shot he fired rang out. In conclusion, you must agree that the second shot was fired by someone else. Mr. Wright. But who could that uh, someone else be? The murderer, of course. I knew I should have stepped in before your wild fantasies got out of hand. Mr. Wright, look once more at the DL6 incident case file. Look closely. Try the case summary page. The case summary that's on page one. No clues found on scene. Look what is written there. Not a single clue was found on the scene. The pistol had been indeed fired two times, then the other bullet would have been discovered on the scene. That's a contradiction? Here's a point. The second bullet has never been found. Why? Because the second bullet does not exist. The bullet that claimed Gregor Idris' life was the one fired by his own son. As the truth of the matter, the whole truth. It was undoubtedly something that else that made the bullet hole in the door. Wait, what? How is that a contradiction? What a Without spoilers, of course. Order, I will have order. Mr. Wright has, has proven one thing does too quickly. There's two bullet holes and one bullet casing that everything Karma is saying is invalid. True, but... I think it nullifies both of them. Like the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. However, as Mr. Von Karma says, the second bullet fired was not found. It's highly unlikely that the police merely overlooked the second bullet. So all we have is a single bullet fired. I'm afraid I have to discount the defense's claim. 
was clearly something else that wasn't a gun or a bullet that made that bullet hole. It was my dick. <laughs> I praise the judge for his wisdom in this matter. Gah. How did this happen? How could this happen to me? Sorry. A <laughs> glory hole. <laughs> That's why there no like you'd think if there was a gun 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 uh sorry a bolt hole in in the in the in the elevator door the air would come in no it 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 was plugged I don't believe that the second bullet didn't exist was I wrong have I been wrong in this whole incident what are you doing Nick why aren't you raising objection I'm sorry Maya what I it looks like I was wrong. Nick? Second bullet wasn't there, then all my conjectures are for nothing. No. But he said you could do it, Nick. He said you'd get Edward with declared innocence. I'm sorry. It's just when I saw the photograph, I thought the two shots had been fired. I was so certain of it. I thought I'd won. I thought there was another person, someone who else who fired the killing shot. But now was I wrong to think that that it could be that simple? This case has stood unsolved for 15 years. Nick. Well, it seems that we have finally cleared up this incident. Only one bullet was found at the scene of the crime. That shot was fired by Miles Edgeworth. Precisely. I'd like to ask one thing of Miles Edgeworth before asking my verdict. Have you been paying attention to the trial so far? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any objections? N no, no, I do not. So you killed your father, though... Th it was not your, though that was not your intention. Yes, it did. Oh, no. He's accepted the guilt. Very well. Statue of limitations on the murder of Gregory Edgeworth runs out today. Therefore, I must pronounce a defend, defendant's... A verdict on the defendant uh, today right here. Right now. Indeed. Does anyone else... Does anyone have any objections? I've been here before. This is like my first day in court. There are so many things. Oh, is, are we going to get a day's ex machina again? There's so many things I know I should be saying, but my mind's going blank. I can't find the words. Mr. Wright? Objection. Your Honor? I I object. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Mr. Wright, on what grounds do you object? Hmm? Oof. Nick? I, I don't know. His case is perfect. Oh no. Grah. It must exist. The second bullet. What? What did you just say? Nothing. The second bullet must exist. But where? Someone took it. It seems waiting is, is not going to produce us any answers from Mr. Wright. Wait, Your Honor. I, uh... The second bullet. It, uh, it existed. What? No, oh, I'm doing out of the game. <laughs> We've just heard proof that it does not exist. I realize that, Your Honor. I'm really grasping here. It's just someone took it from the scene of the crime. That's what happened. I'm calling all this while munching. <laughs> but who? The murderer. The murderer? Then tell us, just who is this murderer? I'm still thinking about that one. Hmm. So the criminal took the second bullet, but why? Hmm. First of all, how would they have found it? It's not easy to find a straight bullet, Mr. Wright. Was there some pressing need for the murderer to search for the bullet? Wait, if there was a scream, and there was a murderer outside, or inside, no. If it was, if the bullet hole reached outside, there was, there was somebody standing outside, the bullet would have still been in them. Why would the murderer have spent the time to look for the stray bullet? I haven't got a clue. What's wrong, Mr. Wright? Um, Bath, the murderer had no reason to take the bullet. You don't want to admit it, but it's true. 
Had to take it. Had to take it? The murder, but what does that mean? You're thinking too normal, think crazy. Don't think why the bullet was taken. Think why the bullet had to be taken. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, well, the murderer had no intention of taking the bullet from the scene. But, uh, but, uh, the murderer had to take the bullet. Had to, Mr. Wright? What do you mean? Well, for instance, for instance, what? Uh, maybe the bullet, uh, hit the murderer. The bullet hit the murderer? Just saying, for instance. I mean, if it hit you, would you have, would you would have to take it with you, wouldn't you? It's not like you could perform surgery right there. You know? Wait a second. I was just talking off the top of my head, but what if that's really what happened? Let me get this straight. So at the time of the murder, the murderer shot themselves was shot. And left with the second bullet still inside of them? Thus leaving only one bullet at the scene of the crime? Ah, uh, yes. I guess that's how it would work, yes? Well, there's a problem with that. The other two people rescued from that elevator. Miles Edward and Yanni Yogi were both unharmed. So that would mean... The murder came from outside, yes. The two men fight inside the elevator. Trying to stop them, the boy picks up the pistol at his feet and throws it. The pistol discharges and the bullet... Well, it goes to the elevator door and hits the murderer outside. Hold on a second. Sorry, I'm back. It's gonna be Von Karma from we've already we've already discovered that it is Von Karma who who wrote that letter, so I'd assume so. Imagine having such bad luck, yeah. What is his consciousness? Then the murderer opens the elevator door and sees the men inside. You go to murk someone and get shot. Hmm. Mr. Wright, you are truly the most unpredictable defense attorney you've ever known. I can tell you're grasping, yet I cannot deny the possibility of what you say. What are you saying? Deny it, deny it. The one involved in the incident was wounded. There was no murderer. Hmm. No one was wounded at the time of the incident. He's right. I can't think of anyone. Hey, Nick. Huh? I just thought of something really crazy. Crazy? Remember what Mr. Grossberg said yesterday? Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow. Must have been quite a shock from uh, Von Karma. Took a vacation for several months after that, you see. It's an unusual event for the man. That was the first and the last vacation he'd taken in his many years of prosecuting. <laughs> Sauce. What if Von Karma didn't take the vacation because of shock? I took it because he was injured, which would mean it could only mean one thing. He was the murderer in the DLC DL6 incident. He was the man who shot Gregory Edgeworth. It was Von Karma. Oh man, something wrong, Mr. Wright? You seem dazed. Uh, no, Your Honor. Well, you have indicated the possibility that the murderer came from outside. Can you give us the name of your suspect? Uh oh. Should I come out and say it for now? Uh I will say it, but I'm just Yeah, well, I will I will say it now. I just say it because I don't know it's it's it just isn't in case. Your honor, there's a suspect, one lone suspect. Well, this is certain and certainly interesting news. Very well, Mr. Wright. Who is your suspect? <laughs> Ugh, my hands are shaking. V what? Von Karma. Von Karma? <laughs> you 
You mean the Pawn Karma? The Prosecutor. The one standing right over there. Bah. You don't object? I see no need. Why honor this ridiculous outburst with my objection? Because you took a vacation for several months starting the day after the incident. Yet you pride yourself on a perfect record. Why would you take your, take such a long vacation without any reason? So you're claiming that I took a vacation to heal my injury from the incident. Fascinating. Prove it. I would have needed surgery, no? Or did I go under the knife, uh, Mr. Wright? Bring the doctor that operated on me. Have him testify. Right. Nick. Let's find out who his doctor is. It's no use. Edgeworth? I know Von Karma, perhaps too well. He's perfect. He wouldn't leave clues. Probably didn't undergo surgery. That'll leave a doctor as a witness. Nobody's that perfect. S so what, Nick? Did Von Karma pull a bullet out by himself? That's insane. No, he couldn't have. You can't just pull bolts out of yourself. Wait. What does that mean? That bullet has to be somewhere. But where? Oh! Moist, thank you so much for the raid. How was your, how was your game? Days gone, I believe it was. Raid! Raid! <laughs> Anyways, welcome raiders. How's it going? We're about to... S I think we're very close to solving this case. Was the game good? Well, Mr. Wright, can you produce evidence that I, to prove that I was shot? Yes. All right, well, Karma, I'll prove it. And I'll even use evidence. I know how you like it so much. Th what? The evidence that proves Von Karma was shot is... Gave, on, gave up on Days of God and played Pokemons. Uh, doing your uh, Heart Gold Nuzlocke. Metal detect him. Alright, let's see if he's a metalhead. Von Karma is perfect. He wouldn't risk surgery leaving an evidence trail. So then I ask, where's that bullet now? Yee, metalhead. <laughs> I think it's unlikely that Von Karma from the surgery on himself. You, you don't mean... I do. There's a possibility the bullet is still inside of Von Karma. Is it even possible for all these years? Well, there's one way to find out. We could use this metal detector. Well, Von Karma, I'm gonna run this over you and see what we find. Oh, fuck, he looks, he looks pissed. I refuse. You refuse? Refusing this means you acknowledge that the bullet is still inside you. Order, order, order. Your Honor, the defense requests that we be allowed to use the metal detector. Judge, I call for a suspension of this trial. This is an invasion of privacy. The statute of limitations runs it on this case today. It was you who said we had to end it right here, right now. Enough. I permit the use of the metal detector. Mr. Von Karma, you will submit yourself to testing. Nick, what does this mean? I don't know, but we have to give it a shot. Hell yeah. <laughs> you reacted. Something's inside his right shoulder. The bullet. Mr. Von Karma? You. It was you. I was afraid this would happen. And so I remained silent. Indeed, there was a bullet in my right shoulder. However, it has nothing to do with this incident. What? I was shot in the shoulder long before the DL6 incident. I claim that the bullet in my shoulder has no relation to DL6. It has nothing to do with it, yeah. But Mr. Von Karma, can you prove that? 
prove? I have no obligation to prove anything. It is Mr. Wright who must prove something here, not I. Mr. Wright? Well, can you prove it? Can you prove that the bullet in Von Karma's shoulder was from DL6? Of course you can't. You don't have any of the DL6 sense. Oh, yes, I do. When Karma breaks out of prison, he's coming for your ass? Yeah, I know. That's because you took it out of the records room yesterday. With no proof, you cannot convict me of any crime. So sorry, Mr. Wright. No, I'm the one who's sorry, Mr. Von Karma. What? You were close, one day away from freedom. But you see, I have proof. What? Who would have thought you would dig your own grave trying to contact Edgeworth? I can link that bullet in your shoulder to the DL6 incident. And here's my final proof. The fucking bullet! That's... A bullet? Where did you get that? This is the bullet used in the DL6 incident. This was taken from the heart of the victim, Mr. Gregory Edgeworth. The bullet is preserved quite nicely, with all the ballistic markings intact. Ballistic markings. You may recall the term. It came up in the first trial two days ago. Ballistic markings are the fingerprints of a weapon. All bolts fired from a gun are marked with that weapon's unique pattern. By examining the markings, you can tell the, uh, which which weapon fired the bullet. It's quite accurate. We have two bullets uh, in our position. One, the bullet removed from Gregory Edgeworth's heart. The other, Mr. Von Karma, is a bullet buried in your shoulder. We could analyze both bullets. Then, if the markings matched, we would know that both bullets had been fired from the same gun. The very same pistol, in other words, the murder weapon that killed Mr. Gregory Edgeworth. Mr. Gregory Edgeworth. Ugh. Mr. Von Karma, you will let us remove the bullet from your shoulder. We'll compare the ballistic markings to those on this bullet. And solve this case once and for all. Well, Mr. Von Karma? Uh, excuse me. I'm not screaming. That scream. I heard that scream before. Wait, I know. Help, I can't breathe. Quiet, I said quiet. You're not making this any easier. Stop breathing my air, I'll, I'll stop you. Stop breathing my air. Get away. Get away from my father. Bang. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll scream that time. It's that scream I heard in the elevator. 15 years ago. Von Karma, it was you who screamed. Mr. Von Karma? Oh, Edgeworth, Edgeworth, only you would dare defy me. So it was you. You and your father are my curse. Your father shamed me with a penalty on my record. And you, you left, on my scar, you left a scar on my shoulder that would never fade. I'll bury you. I'll bury you with my bare hands. Death. Death. Fifteen years earlier. Chief Prosecutor, I am sorry. Von Karma, it's not like you to make this kind of error. I never would have thought that Edgeworth would be the one to catch you. I was careless. I'm sorry, but you will have to be penalized. I've covered for you in the past, but not this time. <laughs> well, Mr. Wright, do you have any more proof? <laughs> more proof! More proof! Edgeworth! It was a shock like none that I had ever known. Me? Penalized? It took hours for me to regain my composure. Suddenly I found myself in the darkness. 
I was in the court records room. I must have wandered in there without thinking where I was going. The room was pitch black. The lights must have gone on. I went into the hall and found my way to the elevator. I pressed the button, but nothing happened. Then there was a noise. I was in pain. A horrible burning pain in my shoulder. Just then the lights came back on. The elevator door opened before my eyes. I saw three people inside, all lying unconscious from oxygen deprivation. Much to my surprise, a pistol lay on my feet. I knew then it was destiny. In his last moments, Gregory Edgeworth was still unconscious. He died, never knowing who had shot him. Later, he spoke through a medium, blaming Mr. Yogi. He was fooled. It was the perfect crime. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Who would have thought that another man would have come to open that elevator door? Judge? What? What are you doing? Do your job. Bring an end to this miserable charade. Now, end it. Very well. It appears that we have come a very long way to the end of this maze. Fifteen years later. Mr. Miles Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor? You were innocent. You are innocent. As you said, it was all a nightmare. Yes, Your Honor. This court finds a defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, not guilty for a second fucking time. Hell yeah. Oh, that was good. That one was actually very satisfying. That is all the court has adjourned. Karma, karma is too far gone? Yep. I didn't expect that twist. Yeah. Nick, Nick, we did it. Did you see his face? Von Karma looks even paler than usual. He's pretty to be all cool, but inside you crushed him, Nick. Crushed. I gotta say, I'm impressed. Yeah, <laughs> it was pretty close, though. I was sure we had it. I know, I was on the verge of tears the whole time myself. But now it's all just a good memory. So it's finally over, Edgeworth. Right? Yeah? I... I'm not sure how to say this. I know, I know. Try... Thank you. <laughs> I... I see. Thank you, Wright. Hell yeah. You're welcome. I think you could have done better than that. Sorry. I'm not good at this sort of thing. You got a lot to learn, Edgeworth. She's got you there. Whoop! <laughs> Thanks, Severed. Also, thank you for the hydrate. My my throat's gonna fucking kill me tomorrow. Amazing, pal. You pulled through just like I thought you would. Kimber could have even killed Edgeworth with dignity. No, he couldn't have. I'll never forget this, pal. I owe you one. Or I'll never forget this, I owe you one, pal. And tonight, let's party. Dinner's on me. Yeah, my salary went down a bit this month. But who cares? See, Mr. Edgeworth, you should take a lesson from Detective Gumshoe. That's how you say thank you. I... I see. Ahem. Woof! <laughs> Woof! <laughs> just, just hit him with the wow! I... I feel foolish. 
Don't worry. Take it a little at a time. You'll get used to it. It's been 15 years since I've seen Edward this unguarded. Hey, y'all. Lada. Y'all were great in there. Thank you. Yo, Edgeworth, congrats. Uh, thank y'all very much. Y'all. I knew you were innocent from the start, of course. Just look at you. You wouldn't stick your hand in the cookie jar even if no one was there. <coughs> you were the witness on the first day of the job, were you? Yeah, well, let bygones be bygones, eh? Speaking of which, what are you doing now, Lada? Who, me? Ah, oh, I went back to college. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I'll look at that clip after. Let me actually just open it. I kept trying to be an investigative photographer right quick. Or pretty quick. Really? That's too bad. Huh? Isn't that the hot dog guy from the park? Huh? It's over, Nick. My life is over. Oh, why the sad face, Larry? What happened now? Oh, Nick, I'm not long for this world. Oh, no, he's, he's sad again. Uh, you don't look sick. It's Kianza. She's going to live in Paris. Paris, Nick. She's leaving me behind. Ah, uh, she's seen that coming. <coughs> Yo, Edgy. There you are. Um, yes, here I am. Congrats, Edgy. Here, a little gift for me in celebration. Celebration? That's unusual for you. Harry Butts, you you come along you come along tonight too. My treat, pal. Oh, uh, thanks. Looking forward to it. Yo yo, Nick. That's the suit that questioned me. When he says treat, that's not police talk for prison food, right? Right? Uh, I think it'll be fine, Larry. Right? Yeah. What's up? That envelope that Larry gave me? It's got money in it. Well, yeah, that's not that strange. People money, people give money to celebrate sometimes. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, this, this, all this talk is fucking shearing my throat. Well, yeah. That's not strange. People are, okay. It's $38. Oh. Larry stole his money. <laughs> huh. What a weird amount. I mean, it's not a little, but it's not a lot either. $38, exactly. N Nick. Wasn't that exactly the amount of lunch money that was stolen from Edgeworth in, in school? $38. No. No, Larry, it was you. What are you so surprised about, right? Huh? Larry was absent that day from school, right? But it doesn't automatically rule him out as a suspect. What? Think back to that day 15 years ago. Larry took the day off, but he was bored, so he came into school anyway. Then he saw the money lying there, and the rest is history. I was never good at history. Oh fuck. Edgeworth, you didn't know you didn't know, did you? I suspected. I just couldn't picture Larry protecting you like he did that day. Everyone else was saying you did it. The whole class was against you, remember? Yeah, too well. Right, you may not know this, but we used to have a saying back in school. When something smells, it's usually the butts. I know, I know. Really right? I'm surprised you didn't figure it out. Well, this sure is an unexpected turn of events, eh? Edgeworth. You should have told me. Now, now, Nick. It was 15 years ago. Don't you think the statute of limitations has run out, Mr. Edgeworth? I'd say so, yes. There you have it. <laughs> Where does that leave me? I became a defensive attorney because of what you two did. Well, you've always been something of an insufferable emotionalist. Yeah, and you get worked up too easily, too. Thanks, butts. Death. The death sentence for both of you. And if I only known I would have become a prosecutor. Same goes for me, only the other way around. For the longest time, I thought I might have killed my own father. I thought I might be a criminal. I became a prosecutor in, or in part to punish myself. If I had known the truth, I might have become a defense attorney after all. Edgeworth. Want to switch, right? 
Hey y'all, line up, I'll take a photo. Hey, photo time, let's go. And after that, dinner on me. Hell yeah. Detective Gumshoe took us out on the town that night. We celebrated Edgeworth's newfound freedom. Even though Edgeworth himself was still in detention. September 29th, 5.02 a.m., right in Cove Law Offices. Whoa, I went a little too overboard yesterday. My head hurts. Huh? It's still only five. Maybe I should go back to sleep? Hmm? What's this, a letter? Good morning, Nick. You were really impressive yesterday. Seeing you, it made me think about what I'm doing here. I'm a spirit medium, in training, of course. I wanted to help Mr. Edgeworth, too. I wanted to help you. But I couldn't. I was useless. So I decided to go back to my training. I'll become a full-fledged spear medium for starters. I couldn't say it to your face. So I left this letter. Goodbye, Nick. Oh. And Edgeworth will be back not to not liking you the next trial. Episode 5, watch. We'll have to see. Goodbye, what time is it? Gah! The first trains from the mountains have already left. To the station. Canonically, he rides a bike, so this would be really stupidly fast. I guess I'm too late. Hey! Crab! How's it going, Sphinx? Nick! Maya! So, you're leaving? Yeah. It's hard being a spirit meeting who can't talk to spirits. And I think you'll do fine without me, Nick. Be good, okay? W wait. What? I never could have saved Edgeworth without you, your help. Huh? On the last day of the trial, I heard her. I heard Mia's voice. You heard my sister? Yes, only her voice, but still. It was at the very end when I thought we'd lost everything. Oh, well, that's my sister for you. This is the 15th time you evolved crab. <laughs> I really like that emote. That's a nice, comfy emote. That's my sister for you. Detective Gumshoe helped, and Mr. Grossberg, and even Larry. I'm the only one who couldn't help. I was useless, Nick. But you were the one who stopped Von Karma, Maya. Huh? I didn't do anything. All I did was wander around in a daze. I'm sorry, but I have evidence that you helped. Evidence? Show Maya some evidence to cheer up. The bullet. A bullet? Von Karma was convinced he had taken all the evidence pertaining to DL6. Cape did it? I still love it, it's adorable. But you're the one who rescued the last piece of evidence we needed. This was the bullet that put an end to Von Karma. And you were the one who gave it to me. Nick. Thanks, Maya. I couldn't have done it without you. I'll be back soon. Huh? I'm gonna complete my training and come back. Okay, I'll be waiting. Of course you will. You can't run that office by yourself, you're hopeless. I fucking love her. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. So, this is it. See you soon, Maya. It's also based off my own blanket. Nice. Thanks, Nick. So my story ends. Time to turn a new page. And say goodbye to the novice defense attorney that I once was. Now a new story begins. With the same old crazy cast of characters. Ha, don't think you've graduated yet, amateur. Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to rethink that claim? Uh, yes, your honor. Uh-oh, I got a bad feeling about this. Hell yeah. I fuck. I, I really like this game. This was a, such a good game. 
I know there's I know there's more content plus two other games in this trilogy, so. Hey pal, Mr. Edgeworth came down to the precinct to wish me a happy new year. Talk about a pleasant surprise. Whoop. Detective Gumshoo. Then he hung his head low and went right back to outside. <laughs> kind of like he was embarrassed or something. Strange, huh? Catch. Uh, could someone uh, pull up what the raid message was? It was something about a parrot. Huh? Nick? No, I haven't seen him lately. Who, me? I've been working at a cheese shop. That Missy's a nice lady, but she's not exactly what you'd call a cheap date. Huh? Oh, she's in Hawaii right now. Yeah. Oh, Larry. Bring the pair to the set. Thank you. Oh, I forgot about this loser. Oh, right? Yeah, I remember him. I hear he's been busy lately. You know, not to ring my own bell, but I sort of taught him everything he knows. I'm sure he's grateful. Fucking fools! Where's the parrot? <laughs> Alright, so the, the raid message will be to bring the parrot to the stand, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish using it. Ah, the defense attorney from whom I wrote that affidavit for, yes. Oh, you should know I've taken over management of the Gatewater Hotel recently. Should you be in the area, please stop by. Forgot that my TV is distributed to light. <laughs> Ahem. Oh, it's you. Phoenix Wright? Ah, yes, Maya's understudy. Was he not? I wonder how he's doing. Haven't seen him as of late. Ah, the days of my youth. Like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. Wait, wait, what? Oh, fuck her. Phoenix Wright? Is he an actor? Well, I'm not buying it. You can't be a star with a name like Phoenix. Did you know that? Oh, uh, I'm not reading that. Is the game over? Nope. Uh, there's one more thing, uh, apparently. And then two more games in this trilogy pack, which is on Steam. So. I'm pleased to announce the Pink Princess is a hit. I'm sure I owe that Mr. Wright a great deal. <laughs> I want to keep my face out of the public eye till the show's over. I wouldn't want to ruin any kids' dreams, you know? Uh, it's just, it's, this is, I guess this is, like, it was the four episodes, and then, like, the main. Like, and this is, like, the, the ending of the main, and then there's one, like, bonus, I guess. I got a letter from Maya the other day. It sounds like she caught a cold standing under a waterfall. I wanted to visit, but I didn't have time, so I sent her some Pink Princess trading cards. Excuse me. Uh, she says she can't buy them where she is. What kind of place is she living at, anyway? So, I will, I will be playing more of this game. Uh, but with West of Loathing probably ending... Sunday, I guess? Right? Who's that? You wanna talk? Let's talk Pink Princess. Alright. But, you know, I, I snuck into the studio the other day. And I saw her. The one inside the Pink Princess suit. Ugh, what a dog. I was kind of a shock for a boy at my tender age. Uh, West of Loathing is probably ending sa uh, Sunday, as it's, like, I'm very, very close to the ending. And then I'll probably cycle in either Metal Gear Solid 3 or Fallout 4, maybe. Oh, I'm, I'm on the, I'm in training with people for paranormal fair to, uh, for photography. You know that picture I took of everyone? Well, just behind them, there's a ghost. For real? Now that's talent. I'm gonna be famous. Wait, what? Oh, there's a ghost. That is a fun picture. I really like this game. Oh. A new episode has been added. Oh, fuck. Rise from the ashes. Okay. Anyways. 
Uh, let's figure out who to raid. Who is still on? We have four different options. Uh, Minehot, Iris Agate, Pipetron, and if I, I really don't want to do this, but like, yeah, actually, no, it's just uh, those three. The fourth option was going to be Vine Sauce Joel, but I don't think, uh, I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't feel right doing that. Phoenix wrong. <laughs> Ray the Variety Streamer knows Final Fire 64? No. Fucking hate that guy. He's a piece of shit. So what are we thinking, guys? Or if there's somebody, or if there's somebody else that we want to raid, uh, smaller streamer or something. What, 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 if if you guys want to raid a smaller streamer or something, show them some love. Uh, we can do that too. Up to you guys. Oh, but I don't want to raid Gumbo. He knows our he knows our raid message and the it's kind of spoiled. Raid is he is is he on Dev on right now? I'm surprised this shit hasn't been kicked in yet. Bad, I mean. All right, so who are we th who are we thinking? Pipetron, Iris Agate, or Minehot? Cringe. I choose whatever Sphix chooses. Uh, and cho Sphix chooses mine hot. Okay. Alright, I, I hope everybody has a good rest of their day. Or night, depending on where you are. But, uh, I, I have, I've had hella fun playing this. And I'm still gonna have, enjoy it. Uh, so my plan is for this, is to do all three of the, all three of these games. Emulate, uh, Apollo Justice, which is technically the fourth one. Uh, and then Dual Destinies, and then probably both of the Miles Edgeworth games. Maybe Spirit of Justice. I have I have no interest in doing any of the uh, past Phoenix Wright games. I've I've seen a little bit of them, and it just doesn't. I don't doesn't feel like it has the same kind of flair, you know. Or maybe too much flair. I don't fucking know. So yeah, these three: Apollo Justice. Uh, apologize, these nuts. Anyways, the raid message will be um. What was what was? Oh, thank you for doing the the YouTube and the Discord there. Uh, fucking. There you go. There's the rated message. Uh, I object to all the people not liking the VOD. Oh, well. Uh, take care, everyone. Have a good night.